The Arusha bus terminus is as busy as any. But over the past few months, things have become even more crowded. A new bus route has opened up to a destination that even Tanzanians themselves hadn't heard of. Today though, the Ngorongoro Loliondo route taking passengers north of Arusha is by far the most popular here. 44-year-old Ibrahim Ahmed Kapiendo knows this very well. He's a ticket clerk here. Here. But brisk but business, brisk business isn't his, isn't his only reason, only reason for his belief, his belief in this route, in this route and, who it, and who it leads to. Behind his eyes lies lie a testimony, lie a testimony, that, testimony is that is being told and retold re throughout, throughout Tanzania. Tanzania. Until the 5th of March this year, Ibrahim was suffering from glaucoma, a degenerative eye disorder which eventually causes blindness. So he booked himself a ticket to Loliondo. The man he's referring to as Babu is 76-year-old Ambilikile Mwasapile, and over the past few months, Tanzanian people have been inundated with stories of the man and a miracle cure for all chronic diseases known to man. The tale of this septuagenarian from Loliondo is quickly becoming legend. Thousands have trooped to Loliondo, some dying along the way, in a pilgrimage that even few here could have comprehended just a year ago. We decided to go and see for ourselves. At Namanga, the border town straddling Kenya and Tanzania, we only needed to get out of our car for people to mob us, volunteering stories about Mwasapile and his lure. The people here advised us not to go through Arusha northward to Loliondo, but instead go through Magadi into Tanzania. It is, according to them, the better route to Loliondo. And so our journey began. And before long, we found that the route we were advised to take wasn't exactly smooth. But we weren't the only ones taking this trip. Right from the outskirts of Magadi, <laughs> Nearly every car we met was headed to or from Loliondo on this pilgrimage of faith. The journey itself is a test of faith. Taking you from the marshes of Shompole, across rivers in Pinyin, the southernmost point right at the border between Kenya and northern Tanzania, and along the shores of Lake Natron. It's a 300 kilometer ride that is not easy to get through as we found out. And we weren't carrying any sick people. As we drew closer though, the toll from a punishing road began to manifest itself. Cars broken down in the most remote of places, hundreds of kilometers from help. After close to seven hours of travel, we were there, or at least we thought so. Like a traffic jam in the of so shocking is the abruptness of, from what I could judge, a seven kilometer traffic jam snaking through the middle of nowhere that all you can do is look. Men and women and children of all ages, weary but heartened by the fact that they finally have reached the promised land, trooping slowly towards the head of this jam. An open-air waiting room full of patients suffering from all ailments, waiting to see just one man. It seemed an impossible task for any man from what I could tell. 
Scale doesn't even begin to describe what we've seen here in Samunge. Hundreds of cars parked along this road here, entering to where the doctor is treating people. Thousands of people sleeping in the bush if they have to, all waiting for their turn very patiently to see him. Now the only area that we've seen selling traditional medicine, and by traditional I mean western medicine, is a small dispensary up the road, has absolutely no business. Well if Babu, as they call him, is an actual faith healer, then as you can see, he's got a lot of followers. We had barely taken all of this in when we heard a throbbing sound from above us. A helicopter rising from the pit of the Muegaro Hills ahead of us. We had heard tales of extremely rich invalids being flown here to drink the concoction. We soon would hear the tale of this helicopter and its occupants. When, uh, when I was here waiting on a queue, uh, I saw one helicopter come with the person who actually was suffering with uh, diabetes for about 20 years. So they carried him on a stretch um, as they gave him uh, the first priority because it was really um, um, serious. And um, once he drank the cup of this uh, medicine from Babu, the man started talking and he confessed himself that uh, he was suffering for about 20 years. After convincing the patients that we were only here as reporters and not patients, we got to the front of the line, where we were confronted with an image that both confirms the faith that the people here have in this drink and the desperation that walks hand in hand with this belief. The old man you see here is Ambilikile Mwasapile, the man he's attending to can't speak or drink the liquid for himself. The catheter in his throat, a clear sign of what his handlers say he is suffering from. He has throat cancer. The medicine has to be administered through a tube in his stomach. He was whisked away soon afterwards. We were unable to confirm his condition, although it was claimed that he seemed to have regained full consciousness after being given the drink. Evening quickly sets in, and under a small tent, Ambilikile, or Babu as he is called, sits pouring this green liquid into cups. They're quickly taken to cars with keen occupants waiting. Money changes hands. The drink costs 500 Tanzanian shillings, approximately 25 Kenyan shillings. Children get half a cup, which sometimes is more than they want or can handle. The pace at which the medicine is doled out is frenetic, but it's done with such precision of hands that have practiced this before over three or four months. Babu pouring the medicine into cups and then distributing them to cars and to people here, all of whom through prayer, through faith, are all hoping to be healed. Of the thousands that are here, many are women and children. Yusta Isante has come here with her three children all the way from Arusha. Soon though, Soon the, medicine the medicine runs out. Runs out. And a weary Ambilikile is led back to his house for the night. Undeterred, the multitude of the hopeful begin to bed down for the night, many of them under the stars. The following morning, we get to talk to the man at the center of this pilgrimage and speak to the legion of believers and the very few critics. For those who have come, for all of those who have come, they still test positive. Of the man and a drink that is now becoming known as the wonder of Loliondo. John Alanamu, NTV, Samunge, Loliondo, Northern Tanzania. <laughs>